the Celtics. And after that, at 10.30, the Pelicans go into Staples Center to play LeBron James and the Los Angeles Lakers. And don't forget, on ESPN+, Plus, you can watch More Than an Athlete, the story of LeBron James and his childhood friends coming together. Come and on, come on, get up! Tomorrow, you can see Jalen Rose wearing a crazy outfit when they break down the big Monday Night Football game, Ryan Clark's <laughs> power rankings, and much more. That's every day at 8 a.m. on ESPN with Get Up. Welcome back to Jalen and Jacoby. Jalen Rose, the Packers have not just dominated the Bears in recent years, they've dominated the Bears in Soldier Field in recent years. Well, guess what? All of that changed yesterday when Mitchell Trubisky and the Bears defense got after Aaron Rodgers, made him look very pedestrian. And not only that, Mitchell Trubisky was running all over the place. Jalen, this game solidified the NFC North for the Bears. But what else it did is it ended the Packers' hopes of making the playoffs. Is the story coming out of this game more about the success of the Bears or the failures of the Packers? It should be more about the success of the Bears. Khalil Mack had two and a half sacks. He was everywhere seemingly playing inspired football. I love Eddie Jackson, what he brings to the secondary. Not only is he a ball hawk, but he's a hard hitter. He's really physical. Like the Bears are legitimate on that side of the football. No, no question about it. They went from being a top 10 defense without Khalil Mack to basically being one of the, if not the best in the game. And so when they're taking care of the football like Trubisky was able to do, Cohen has become one of the best Swiss Army knives we have in the game. And so now all of a sudden the Bears look like a team with that defense that could probably travel and win a playoff game or two. I like that. But of course, Jalen Rose, the media guy, is going to make it all about the superstar, all about Aaron Rodgers and all about what the Packers are going to do moving forward. They've already fired their coach. They haven't drafted a lot of people to support him. And not only have they not drafted people to support him, there's been a couple former Packers that have been kind of vocal in their lack of support for Mr. Rogers. The latest is former strong safety Leroy Butler, who tweeted, I mean, really, if you can't outplay Mitch Trubisky, how good are you? Aaron's only job is to outplay the other QB. Agree? You will never win scoring 17 points. Jalen, why do you think these former Packers are being so vocal about Aaron Rodgers. It's odd to me. Is there something going on behind the scenes on the locker room with Packers and his teammates? Well, a couple of Rogers things. And in Aaron Rodgers' defense, like I talked about that on this program all year. For national media consumption, a lot of people feel just because he's under center that all of a sudden they're going to be one of the best teams in the NFL. And you haven't really been paying close attention. They haven't truly established a run game. We don't know who their second go-to receiver is besides Adams. Graham has been virtually non-existent as a guy that caught 10 touchdowns last year with Seattle, and their defense doesn't have an identity. So much so, a guy they drafted a couple of years ago in the first round, Ha Ha Clinton Dix, they traded him during this year, and they fired their head coach, and Mike McCarthy, who won the Super Bowl and was there over a decade. So this just looks like a rebuilding situation. Now, for former players to come out and speak about Aaron Rodgers, it really just said that he rubbed some of those guys the wrong way. And now that the team is struggling, they're taking the opportunity to let it be known that it ain't all about just the teammates around him. Start making sure we hold him accountable. Well, Jalen, after the game, there was a touching scene in the middle of Soldier Field. Bears lineman Charles Leno Jr. got down on one knee, broke out the ring, and got engaged. He is now an engaged man, and we love power couples. We always support love and matrimony. But Jalen, here's my question for you. If they lost the game, does he still propose? Absolutely not. He probably was waiting to the right moment in the right game so that everybody's number one happy. If they had just gotten beat, then everybody wouldn't have been happy. And so that would have been a poor time to do it. And so for him to propose, some people feel like they dislike the public, um, the, the, public uh, uh, the public marriage, the public engagement. engagement. For me, it's each his own. And he was living his best life. She was enjoying it. It was a terrific moment for a team that just clinched the division. And so let's continue to see how this power couple matures. 
we got to get them some J&J gear. Y'all know how we support power couples on this program. We always support power couples. I was concerned. I feel like she needed a jacket. You know what I mean? She was just wearing like a flannel and a t-shirt. I don't know exactly what the temperature was in Soldier Field, but it's usually pretty cold in Chicago. Let's get her a jacket as an engagement gift. And then Jalen, staying in the NFC North, I couldn't help but notice that the Detroit Lions lost. Not only lost, they lost to the Bills. Yeah. Jalen, not only the Lions yeah. have been out of the playoffs for a while. And, you know, of yeah. course, there's been not too much to talk about with them. But now it's starting to get bad. Josh Allen yeah. ran all over the Lions. Matt Stafford, your $100 million quarterback, managed to muster 13 yeah. points against the Bills defense, who had a player quit at halftime earlier this year. Jalen, what is going on with the Lions quickly? <laughs> meow. Meow. Seriously, what's going on with your squad? Meow. We need an identity. Like, th that, that's really what it is. And you, you hope that, that that starts with Matt Patricia and the pedigree that he had with the Patriots. And it hasn't translated to on-the-field success. We've shown flashes. I like what I've seen from Kerryon Johnson this year. I like what I've seen from Galladay. He can make some big catches in traffic. But, like... I think that's the best Big analysis that Slay. offered about the Lions this season. He be balling. <laughs> you know, meow. That's all I can say. We're going we to get a top flight pick this year. Jalen, you know I Tough love NBA watch. League Tough Pass. One thing I love about NBA League Pass is a lot of time when they go to commercial, they show you what's happening in the arena, and you get the little, like, in-between-the-breaks entertainment. And this was a T-shirt toss in Memphis. Remember, a T-shirt toss, and they're up on the Jumbotron. So what does homeboy do? Leads in for the kiss against the Rockets fan, and she backs away. Is this a Tinder date gone wrong? Do you think this is the first kiss? Do you think she's mad? Like, what is happening here? This is not a kiss cam. <laughs> So I, I I have a lot of questions. Okay. Number one, it seemed like they were on a date or they were it there did. together. But it didn't seem it like they were in a relationship. One was cheering for Memphis and one was rooting for Houston. So now I can clearly tell he got the tickets. <laughs> I can also tell that in her mind, I'm going to the game with you, but this ain't really like a date. I know. We're just going to go and have a good time at the game. And you know just like, like a man, as soon as we pay for something, we feel like somebody owe us something, probably had a couple like of beverages, me. start feeling good about it. It felt like there was the some, roar she's of the like, crowd. She's like, I'm going to go in for the be very fight. upset with me if they see me doing this on camera. We'll be back. <laughs> 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 <laughs>